Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from Leak Code called Maximum Subarray. It's a medium. Let's get started. Given an integer array nums, find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number which has the largest sum and return its sum. A subarray is a contiguous part of an array. Example one, we have our input nums and here we output six because the subarray from four to one has the largest sum. Any other subarray doesn't have as big of a sum as six. Example two, we have nums being one and here we just output the number one. Example three, we have nums five, four, negative one, seven, eight. And the subarray with the maximum sum would be the entire input itself, summing to 23. So how do we solve this? An immediate brute force approach that comes to mind is to find every single subarray possible for a given input nums, finding its corresponding sum and returning the max sum that we find. But can we do better? Let's take a step back and think about this intuitively. Say we're given a random subarray of any input array. How do we increase its sum? To increase its sum, I want to include as many numbers in it as possible to boost that total sum, right? So I want to expand my subarray as far to the left and right that I can, potentially encompassing the entire input nums. But why can't I do that for every single input that I come across? What's stopping me? Since we're dealing with integers, this includes negative numbers and has the potential to bring our sum down. So we do want to expand as far to the left and right as possible to include as many numbers as we can, but we want to stop once we start hitting numbers that reduce our total sum. Those are going to mark the start and end points of our subarray. And we saw this in example one, right? Four to one was a subarray with the largest sum. If we tried going further to the right, we would run into negative five and say we wanted to go further to include four. To include four, we'd also have to include negative five since a subarray is contiguous. We can't just skip over negative five. And this net right here is negative one. So it's reducing our total sum. We don't wanna go further than this one right here. And same thing on the left, right? If we try to start earlier than four, we run into a negative three that would bring our total sum down to three. And if we try pushing further, this even though bumps it back up by one, it's a net negative. And again, negative two would just decrease it. So what we wanna do is try to include as many numbers as possible, but stop once we hit the negatives. So let's take a closer look at example one. So I have example one over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start at the very first index, index zero. So this is gonna be my start and end point of my current subarray is just going to be negative two right here, which means my current sum would also be the same as would my max sum, the best sum that we've seen so far. Now I'm already at the leftmost point of my subarray, of my input nums. How do we increase this subarray? We want to go as far to the right as we can to include more numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push end further down till we come across this new number here, which means my current subarray would be negative two to one. So what's my current sum? Negative two plus one is negative one. And of course we can update max sum to reflect that as well. But this is my current sum. Do we notice something though? My current sum is negative one, but it's less than the new number I just came across. What does that mean? It means the net current sum that we had seen before this new number was a negative. It's bringing my total sum down. It's bringing my individual value down. So we don't need to include it at all. We're going to cut it off and we're going to have a new start point being this number that I'm on. Current sum is now going to be updated to just one as will max sum. So if the net that we see is negative, if the current sum plus our number is somehow less than just our number itself, we want to start over. So current sum would be the max of current 
sum that we've seen plus number or just the number itself. So do we want to extend our subarray or do we want to start over? In this case, we wanted to start over and then max sum would be the max of whatever max sum we store so far and any new current sum that we come across. And this is also going to equal to one. And again, this is the best left point that we start with. And to increase this total sum, we want to go as far to the right as possible. So I'm going to continue moving n down. So we come across this new number here. The new number is negative three. And I do the same thing. So my current sum was one, just here. One plus negative three is negative two. And negative three by itself is not as big as negative two. So current sum is now going to be negative two. And we don't update max sum. My current subarray is from one to negative three. So I'm gonna push my end down again. And now I come across four. Current sum, negative two plus four is two. Versus four by itself is a higher sum. So we want to start over. We, it's not worth it to go as far left to include our start point being one because we have to go across a negative three. And this is a net negative number, it's negative two. So instead, I'm going to push start to be this new number, and n will also be that, which means my current sum is just the number itself. And that is true because the max of two and four is just four. We can go ahead and update max sum as well. And now we do the same thing, we push down my current number my new number is negative one and my current sum was four. So four plus negative one is three versus just negative one by itself. Doesn't make sense to start over. We do want to start at four, even if it means we will be coming across negative one because it's still a positive number. So this is going to be three. We don't update max sum. Continue moving on. This is two. So two by itself or two plus three, which gives us five. We want to make an update. It's gonna be five. My current sum of my current subarray is five and max sum is five as well. Continue pushing down. I come across one. This is a positive number. And since our current sum was already positive, we don't wanna start new. We want to include everything we've seen before. So it's either one or five plus one which is six. The max of that is six, and we go ahead and make our updates. Continue pushing down. We are at negative five. So do we want the max of one or negative five? We're gonna go with one. No need to update max sum here, and continue going down from the end. And say, actually, before we even go down, say four has on more numbers after it. And there was some subarray here that was positive. It makes sense to, instead of starting at four, start all the way here because this is a net positive one and it's only going to increase our total sum. So wherever we are right now at starting point is good. And now we wanna continue pushing down as far to the right as we can with our endpoint until we go through our entire input nums. And here we land at four. Current sum plus number would be five. Number by itself would be four, so we go with five. But we don't update max sum because that's six, and that was from here, which is what we had expected when we did that first example anyway. So before we code this up, to recap, we're gonna start at the leftmost point and iterate through our entire input nums as soon as our current sum plus numbers is less than the number itself. That means everything to the left of our current new number has been negative and there's no need to include it in our subarray. So we're gonna get rid of it, start new, and continue pushing to the right to try to get the max sum. So to code this up, I'm going to initialize my current sum to be zero. We haven't really seen anything yet. And I'm gonna iterate in numbers. So for number in nums, current sum, would be the max of 
print sum plus numbers versus just the number that I see by itself. And max sum is going to be the max of max sum and print sum. At the end, all I have to do is return max sum. And since we are making this comparison, we want to initialize this. I'm going to set this to be that very first index that we see. So nums of zero. Let's go ahead and run this code. Accepted and submit. And accepted as well. Before leaving, let's run through one quick example just so we understand what this code does line by line. And I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I'll make this a negative line and this 10. So let's go line by line and see what we're doing here. My max sum is equal to this first index, which is 5. And my current sum starts off with just 0. I iterate through my input array nums, so this is the first number that I am on, and now I go through this for loop. So current sum is the max of my current sum plus number versus the number itself. This is zero, so this is going to be the max of five or five, which comes out to five, and no need to update max sum. We're back in this for loop, moving down. This is the new number that we see. So this is four. Current sum plus number is nine versus the number itself is four. The max is nine and we update max sum as well. Switch this like this. And that means our current subarray is five to four, giving us the max sum of nine. Moving this down, we come across negative one and we update our numbers. So current sum would now be 8. This entire subarray sums up to 8. No need to update max sum though. So we're back in the for loop. We move down. This is our new number that we see, negative 9. And we have negative 9 right here. And current sum plus negative 9 is negative 1. Our current sum is negative 1. This entire thing sums up to negative 1. Pushing down, we come across 10 so number is now 10 versus 9. 10 is higher, which means what we're doing is we're starting over with just 10 by itself. And of course, we can go ahead and update max sum as well. Everything here was a net negative, And instead, we start fresh from 10. This is a total of negative 1, which we don't want to use. And this is how we would solve this in the end, we would return 10 by itself. So talking about space and time complexity. For space, we're only ever using max sum and the current sum, two variables. So that's constant O of 1. And for time, we go through the entire input nums, but we go through it once. It's a one-pass solution. So that is O of n. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Whoa!